Good morning, South Africa. This is Dr. Arthur Frost. I'm so excited about how many Christians are standing up and starting to pray together. There genuinely is a groundswell of prayer going up in our nation. So I would like to encourage you to be part of this. If you can, just go and send us a WhatsApp and we'll give you the details later. But I want you to be part of this because we are going to pray. And as the body of Christ, as we pray, things are going to happen in our nation. And we are excited about what is happening already. And so today I would like to just deal with one or two topics. All right, today I want to deal with the issue of authority. But I want to deal with it in two areas. Number one is the authority of a believer and then the authority of a father. So I want you to listen very carefully, and I want to try and keep this video short today. But as we do this, I want you to get into the truth and start applying it in your life. Because I believe that as we do this, we are going to start seeing things happen. Because too often, we don't understand the authority we have, and they, therefore we don't use it. And because we're not using it, we're not seeing the results that God intended us to see. So let's get right into it. Firstly, I'd like you to know that every single believer has an authority on this earth. Let's go right back to the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we see that the God, then God said this. He says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Listen to this. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So I want you to see this, that God had given all authority to man. All right, man controlled this planet, except for one thing. Man never had an authority over another person. You have never ever been given the authority over another human being, but you have an authority over everything else on this planet. So everybody knows what happened. Adam and Eve sinned. And Satan took back that authority. They gave that authority to Satan and said, listen, you can now have the authority. That is why even in Jesus' temptation, in Matthew chapter 4, and you read verse 8 and 9, it says this, And again, the devil took him up to exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I give you if you would fall down and worship me. Now, I need you to understand something. Satan had the right to be able to make that offer. Why? Because he had gained the authority from Adam and Eve. And therefore, he had the right to make that suggestion and say, listen, if you worship me, I'll give you this. But something significantly happened. And that is that Jesus Christ died and he rose again. The fact that Jesus Christ rose again was hugely significant because now Jesus Christ got the authority back because he had been punished and crucified illegally. And Jesus Christ took the authority back. Now something very interesting happens in the New Testament. Jesus Christ does not give the authority back to the human race. It's very important that we understand this because the human race will just give it off again or trade it off again. And so what happens in this case is Jesus Christ keeps the authority. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 19, it says this, And Jesus came and spoke to him, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So Jesus Christ has full authority in heaven and on earth now. And then he makes a very important statement with the next two words in verse 19. It says, Go therefore. He says, because I have the authority, I am delegating that authority to the church. He says, I am giving it to you as believers to go and use this authority on this earth. And in my name, you can do whatever you need to do. So in the name of Jesus, that is the delegated authority. And as we use the name of Jesus, we are operating as if Jesus Christ was on the earth. It's very similar as we always use this example as somebody who works for the traffic department. All right, they have a badge and they might be a small person, but they have the backing of the entire traffic department or government behind them. And so in the same way, in the same manner, you as a Christian might feel like I'm just a small Christian or I'm insignificant, but you carry that authority in Jesus name. And so therefore, I want to encourage you. 
if you pray in the name of Jesus, things are going to happen because you are calling all heaven to attention and everybody is backing you. So when you pray, you say in the name of Jesus and, the, and whatever you de declare or decree, things start happening and that authority is released on the earth. Here comes a question that I get asked so many times. If I don't have the authority over a human being, how do I pray for somebody who is not uh, born again? Let's say you've got a rebellious child or let's say you've got somebody who is doing something that is not godly. And how do you deal with this? Well, it's very simple. You pray and release an anointing over that person. And you say, God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that any influence that is affecting this person be stopped in Jesus' name. Remember, the Bible is very clear. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We are not fighting people. And this is where so many people go wrong. We get emotionally worked up or drawn into a situation and we want to fight the person. This has never been a fight about a person. It is a spiritual battle, folks. When we deal with the spiritual, the natural comes in line. So let me help you. If somebody is acting contrary to the way they were brought up or contrary to the way that society is going, it is very simple. There is an influence that is influencing them. So all you need to do is pray and restrict the influence around that person. You have got authority over every demonic spirit or every influence that is not a human being. So in other words, anything that comes against that person that is not their, them themselves making that decision, you can influence. So therefore, if you've got a rebellious child, you say, if there's any demonic spirit or any spiritual thing that is influencing that child, I bind it and I restrict that influence from operating in the name of Jesus and you stop your work right now. And you will see that the person will come back to their sound mind and come back to the upbringing, come back to the way that they were brought up and start thinking rationally. And so that is where we need to be. Allow people to make a decision out of their own without having those influences. So this is so important because we carry the authority over this nation. We carry the authority over our homes, over our neighborhoods. So when we pray, we need to be praying in this, uh, in this way and praying and God's blessing will move, but restricting any influence that is affecting our nation, our suburbs, our areas, our family, and in Jesus' name, it is going to come into order. So right now, I want to just deal with fathers. I want to show you a few things around a father and his authority. You see, when we go back to Adam and Eve, and we look at what happened to Adam and Eve, when Eve ate of the fruit, absolutely nothing happened. Absolutely no trauma happened whatsoever. The minute Adam ate, all hell broke loose. Why? It is a very simple principle. God had said that the head is the man. The father is the head. The male is the head. As part of the curse, he said that as well. And it's been right through. And we see that God is looking for the husbands to take their role. Now, let me make something very clear. Very often we see that the woman or the ladies in the home are the more spiritual ones. They are the ones that spend, have the time and have spent years and hours in the word. And sometimes the men have been working very hard and sometimes they just don't have the time to get into the word like the ladies have. But I want to encourage the men today. I want you to know it is not about how many hours you spend in the word. It is not about how much, uh, how many church meetings you've gone to. It's about whether you speak the word of the Lord out of your mouth. You don't have to pray long prayers. You can pray one sentence, but if a father speaks, something happens. There is an authority given to men that when they speak, things happen and things come into order. So I want to encourage the men today. Fathers, if you are a father or a husband, I want you to stand up in our nation, please. I want you to take your God-given authority and decree and release the word of the Lord over your family in Jesus' name, over this nation in the name of Jesus. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, I'll just give you a few scriptures here. It says, but I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. Okay, the head of every woman is man. Okay, and the head of Christ is God. 
So then you get God, then you get Christ, and then you get man, and then you get woman and the children. So I need you to understand, gentlemen, you have an authority. You have a role to play. God honors it and respects you when you stand up and start praying. Ephesians 5.23, for the husband is the head of the wife. So also is Christ the head of the church. So I need you to understand these are God-given orders and principles. Okay, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, it says this, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. God is speaking to the man to leave and take the authority, not the woman. So I need you to understand, gentlemen, it's time for us to stand up and take our role. It doesn't matter how long or how complicated or how simple you pray. It is just simply this. I pray, I release a scripture, and in Jesus' name, I decree what I need done. If you need peace in your home, you pray peace over your home in Jesus' name. And things are going to start happening. I want to encourage you. Gentlemen, let's stand up and take our place in this nation. I want to just give you two very quick examples of where fathers prayed and things happened in the Bible. The first one was in Job in the Old Testament. Job chapter 1 verse 5 says this, So it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them. He would rise up early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For, this, uh, for Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This Job did regularly. Some translations said that he did this daily. So I want you to see something. Job sacrificed animals every single day to protect and cover his family. Now in Job chapter 2, we read that there was a wall of protection around Job. And remember God and Satan were busy negotiating and discussing Job's protection. And then Satan said, please give me a chance. And then God said, you can. And let me tell you something. The thing that went wrong with Job wasn't the fact of him putting a hedge around him. The Bible says the thing that I feared most came upon me. In other words, fear opened the door into that hedge and Satan had a gap. But that's not the point. The point is this. Every time Job did something, there was a hedge that was created. Gentlemen, I want to tell you, every time you pray, there is a hedge of protection around your family. Every time you pray, things start coming in order because you carry that authority and God honors that. God honors that. When you speak, things are going to happen. In Acts chapter 10, I want to show you a New Testament uh, story quickly. In Acts chapter 10, I want to tell you the story of Cornelius. Now, Cornelius was an Italian soldier. He wasn't a Christian, all right? Up until now, nobody except Jews could be born again. And you know the story of Peter. Peter had this vision, and he had a vision of a sheet. And he had all these animals clean and unclean. And God spoke to him through the vision to go and look for this man Cornelius and go preach the gospel to him. In fact, when Peter went to go and preach the gospel to him, not only did Cornelius get saved and get born again, he was the first Gentile to get saved. He was the first Gentile to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, it's very significant as to what happened. What brought this incredible thing, uh, this experience to Cornelius' house. What made Cornelius different from everybody else? Well, let's read it. In Acts chapter 10, verse 1 and 2, it says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion, or rather what is called the Italian regiment. He was a devout man and one who feared God with his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. I want you to see something. Here was an Italian gentleman who prayed to God even though he, he was not able to get born again. He prayed because he believed God. And one of the things that moved God's hand was he was a father who prayed. He was a father who stood in the gap and he gave to the poor. Two things were significant that moved God's hand. Number one was that he prayed and number two that he gave to the poor. Now I want you to see something. It was significant that God used Peter to come and lead Cornelius to the Lord. Why was it significant? Because Cornelius was the first Gentile. If you are not a Jew, you are called a Gentile. All of us in South Africa, most of us are Gentiles. All right, we are not from the Jewish nation. 
and directly from the Jewish descent. And Cornelius was the first one. And the reason why God moved was because he prayed. He was a devout man. He feared God and he kept praying. I want you to know, gentlemen, when you pray, situations can change. Miracles can take place. Things can happen in your house that you never expected. Gentlemen, I want to leave this last challenge with you. Do not leave this responsibility to your wife, to your wife or to your children or to somebody else or to the pastor. Take up this role today and stand in the gap. Like I said many times, it's not how complicated the prayers. It's just that we pray in Jesus name. So I want to close with this today. It is important that we take our authority. Okay, somebody's going to ask me, Doctor, what happens if I'm in a situation and I don't have a husband? All right, I might be a divorcee. Can I as a mother pray? Yes, you can. You, you can pray. God says that he will be the father to the fatherless if you're an orphan or a widow. God then stands in that gap. You can pray and take that responsibility. If you're in a situation where you don't have a man around, it is fine. You still pray. But there's just something about the authority of when a father prays or when a husband prays. Because God has put it in that order. So right now I want to encourage us that we are part of the ribbit strategy. Alright, this is our prayer strategy over our nation. And before I close today, I want us to pray the ribbit prayer together. I want us to pray the strategy over our nation in the name of Jesus. I believe with all my heart that God is going to make a difference in our nation as we pray. I want to warn us, as we get closer to the elections and closer to the time that we need to make our vote and make our, our voice known, I want to tell you that there's going to be a lot of things going around social media, a lot of things to provoke fear, okay, to provoke antagonism, people getting you into fights. I want you to stay clear of that. Be careful of that thing, because the minute you do that, you are agreeing with the demonic spirit, especially if you start passing that stuff around. If you're a Christian, you cannot go passing down around things that are not true, and most of these things are not true, and you cannot go around and propagate fear in our nation. I want to encourage you. Let's focus on the positive. When the church prays, things happen in Jesus' name. And I want you to stand in agreement with us. We are going to pray. And as we pray, there is a blanket of prayer covering and protection. And in Jesus' name, these plans that the devil has got to institute and release fear of our nation will not come to pass in the name of Jesus because we trust our God. And with the authority God has given the church, we are going to release peace over our nation. We are going to release blessing over our nation. We are going to release the power of God to totally bring a blanket of saturation of peace and calm over our nation in Jesus' name. Why do we say that? Because in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, and I just want to read this to you. 1 Timothy chapter 2, there is a promise that God has given us that says that if we pray over our leadership, we can expect four things. I want to read it to you. It says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers and intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people, for the kings and all those in authority. Listen, that we may live peaceful, quiet, godly and holy lives. Peaceful quiet, godly, and holy lives. Those four things we can have if we pray as the body of Christ. So I want to encourage you, don't get into this fear thing. Don't go down that road. Stay with the power of God. So let's go through our ribbit today. The R stands for repent of any form of iniquity. We are repenting on any form of iniquity that's taken place. Any form of a sin that is releasing a demonic spirit or, or a a demonic influence over our nation. Number I is to intercede for our leaders. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13 verse 2, it says that God has instituted our leadership and he has put them there. We do not resist our authority that is over us. We pray for them and we intercede that God will move for them. In Matthew 20, uh, 12, 29, we bind the strong man that is influencing any part of our leadership. In Jesus' name, we bind the strong man that's trying to hold over South Africa in Jesus' name. 
Then A stands for angels, Psalm 103, 20. It says that the Lord will release his angels because they are heeding to his voice. When we quote scripture, angels move. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says that we need to give thanks in Jesus' name. So I want us to take this rivet prayer and we're going to pray it together today. I want you to stand in agreement and we are going to pray over our nation in the name of Jesus. So pray with me. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We ask for forgiveness of any form of iniquity that's taken place over our land. Any action that has happened that has released a demonic right or a curse right to operate over our nation, we ask for forgiveness for that today in Jesus' name. We ask you to forgive us our sin. Lord, anything that we have done, any active thing that we have done against your word, we ask you to forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that you cleanse this land in Jesus' name. Lord, right now we intercede for our leaders. Lord, we pray for our president. We pray for our members of parliament. We pray for our municipal leaders. In Jesus' name, any form of authority over us, we pray for them in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you hold the king's heart in your hand and you'll direct them in any way that you feel fit. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray for their salvation. We pray, Lord, that you will give them an encounter with the living God. Lord, let them realize that you are alive. And Father, I pray that they'll wake up in the night hour and realize that you are true and lord i pray right now holy spirit come and have your way in our nation we lift up our leaders today and we father we pray for an intervention and father we pray for an experience with the living god in jesus mighty name lord right now we come as the body of Christ. We stand in agreement and we bind the strong man that is holding our nation captive. We come against you as the body of Christ. We address you and we restrict your works in Jesus' name. We command you to stop operating. Father, we thank you right now that you're going to move by your power. Lord, I thank you that as we pray over our leaders, over our nation, Lord, that angels are being deployed according to scripture as we release scripture. Lord, I thank you that we can pray 1 Timothy chapter 2 over our nation and for our leaders and for those in authority and for the kings. Lord, that as we do that, Lord, angels go out on our behalf and start bringing things in order in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now that we can celebrate the victory. We can celebrate the peace of God over our nation. Lord, we call in a peaceful land. We call in a quiet land. Lord, we call in a godly land and we call in a holy land. Lord, I thank you right now that as the body of Christ stand together, we are going to see a mighty move of God move across this nation in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for this time together in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, right now I pray for each and every man in this nation. Lord, we pray for the men. Lord, I pray that they will stand up and take their authority in the name of Jesus. Fathers, husbands will stand up and start decreeing the word of the Lord and declaring what God has said and releasing scripture in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the men will stand up and Lord, that we will be raising up an army of warriors taking this land in the spirit and releasing the power of God in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for this. Amen. Saints, as we close, I want to encourage you. We are the voice of God in this nation. And as we pray, as we stand up, we are going to see miracles happening in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you. That if you've got this, um, this link via a friend and you want to be part of this prayer movement, we're calling it the Ribbit um, a Prayer Strategy that has gone over our nation. And we are praying this daily over our nation. And we've got prayer chains that are busy interceding and praying for our nation and for our neighborhoods and for our areas. I believe that God is hearing the voice and the cry of our nation in Jesus' name. If you would like to be part of it, you're welcome to WhatsApp me directly and I'll put you on a list, all right, so that you can get direct info directly from us. And we, we just laid out a few things. Number one, we give you prayer strategy on what we're doing. We're giving you some info and we're giving you some teachings and we're giving some direct pointers of the things that we need to pray for, the areas that we need to tackle 
the things that we feel that are important that we need to address directly so that we as the body of Christ can stand in agreement and see things happen in the name of Jesus. My cell number is 082-659-2224. 082-659-2224. I would encourage you, please, I'm asking nicely, that you distribute this as far as possible. Let's get as many Christians together as we stand in agreement. The Bible's very clear. One will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. Can you imagine when all the Christians stand united and we call on God in one voice? I'm telling you right now, we are going to see South Africa change by the power of God. I want to bless you. I want to encourage you. Keep praying. Keep standing on these principles and we are going to see the hand of God move on our behalf in Jesus' name. I bless you. Enjoy your week. Amen.